Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about type checking, type underscore checking in all caps, uh, and why you might use it, and uh, some examples. And I already talked about one of them, so I will link that video in the description, uh, but we'll briefly talk about it here as well. Let's jump into it. Okay, so type checking is a part of the typing module. Let me uh, open up the typing module here. SM3 typing. And this is a new constant that was introduced in, I want to say, 353. Uh, type checking. And yeah, it was introduced in a patch version, which is pretty annoying. Uh, 352, and off by one. Um, but it is a special constant which is always true during type checking. So when MyPy is running or any other static analysis tool, uh, but it is false at runtime. And this allows you to do some, you know, specific code that is either aimed at the type checker or aimed at runtime. I'm going to talk about three common usages that I have for it. Um, there are others as well, of course. Uh, and I'll also talk about what you needed to do if you were targeting 3.5.0 or 3.5.1, which are, you know, versions, <laughs> versions which don't have this special constant. Um, so let's start with the first example, which is a circular import. We actually talked about this in the video that I'll link in the description, um, but I'm just going to show a very simple example again. Um, we're going to have a.py and b.py and and in a.py, we're going to have some function which takes some type from b um, and does nothing, I guess. Uh, print pi, <laughs> something like this. And in b.py, we are going to make that class and um, um, some other function which does nothing. Print hello, hello world and say hello and this is a terrible example but it's mostly just to demo why you would need it here uh, no from a import g and maybe this calls g and so you'll notice here that in order to get this b type i need to put from b import b uh, even though you know this doesn't actually do <laughs> It doesn't actually do anything interesting, and um, you know it, it causes a cycle here because B imports or A imports B and B imports A. Uh, but we're only using this cycle here to do a type annotation, and so let's actually show running this. If we do if name, oh this is supposed to be a B. Oops. If name equals equals name. What do we do? Uh, B equals B, and then, uh, I don't know, <laughs> B dot say hello. Sure, something like that. Um, and if we run this, Python 3 dash MB, you'll see that we get a cyclical import. Um, actually, cool thing about this, I contributed the patch that made this error message better. So, <laughs> most likely a circular import. Yes, yes, indeed, it is a circular import. Um, so we'll, that brings us to our first use of type checking, and I go over more of this in that other video. Uh, from typing import type checking, and what we're going to do here is say if type checking, so only during typing time are we going to import this this cycle. We're only we're going to break this cycle just so that you know the type checker is happy. The type checker can do cyclical imports. It has special code for handling this, specifically because it is a common case. Uh, the other thing that we have to do is either quote this type. Um, and now this works, or we have to do from future import annotations. And I have another video talking about future annotations, so I will try to remember to link that in the description as well. Um, but you'll see either of either of those work here uh, because this type is deferred until later. And so that's that's kind of our first use of type checking is cycles. The next use of type checking, and actually I have a flagate module which is very helpful in identifying cases where you would need to use this, uh, flagate typing imports. Uh, the second use case is to have version specific imports. Why is there a pull request here? What is this? Oops. Uh, oh, <laughs> a draft. Okay, yeah. The, um, 
the the second use case here is to have version specific typing imports so if we look at the typing module you'll see that there's a lot of these new inversion whatever new inversion 374 oh that's annoying <laughs> 38 3, 9, et cetera, et cetera. The typing module has been constantly expanding and sometimes in patch versions of Python, which is really, really unfortunate that it, you know, gains new, <laughs> gain new functionality in a patch version. Like usually you would reserve that for a minor version, but even with a minor version, you would still want to do this. Um, and that's where Flakegate typing imports comes into play. It makes sure that you're using stuff that is valid at runtime in the versions of Python that you're targeting. Um, so yeah, you can see here, <laughs> this, this still isn't correct because 374 also saw a change as well. Um, but there are all sorts of different versions where the typing module changes. And so often, uh, and let's actually just uh, we'll delete a.py and make a new, I'll make a t.py. Uh, one example of that is no return, which was introduced in Python 3.6. 3.6.2 or something like that, uh, death main. So let's say this is a function which does not return. I did another video on no return, so I will try and remember to link that in the description as well. Uh, one example of a no return function is a function which only runs exec v. So if we do echo hi os.exec vp command zero command. So exec vp replaces the current process on POSIX platforms. On Windows, it does completely nonsense stuff. Because <laughs> Windows doesn't have an exact model. Um, but this never returns, and so no return is, is a way to say that it never returns. And if we run this, uh, Python 3 t.py, um, of course we need to do from typing import no return. Um, that works in 3.8, because 3.8 has no, the no return. Do I have 3.5 installed? Oh, I do, perfect. So it works great in 3.8, but 3.5 does not have no return. Oh, right. It was added in a later version of Python 3.5. <laughs> Let's see if we can do this. Docker run rmti python 3.5.1 uh, v. That gonna last to pull in 3.5? Yeah, so I'll show you with Python 3.5.1, which is a particularly old version of, of Python. Was this actually introduced in multiple patch versions? Uh, no return. Yeah, it was introduced in 3.5.4 and 3.6.2. So this one, this one's even more complicated. Uh, but if we run Python 3 version, you'll see it's 3.5.1. And if we try and run t.py, you'll see that we get an import error for no return. And we can fix this by adjusting this no return in the same way as we did before from typing import type checking. And then if type checking uh, import no return. And again, we have to quote this or use from future import annotations. But from future import, <laughs> from future import annotations only works in Python 3.7. So now if we try this again. Oh, actually, and this brings us to the other thing that I wanted to talk about in this video. <laughs> type checking is also not available in some versions of Python. It was introduced in 3.5.3 or whatever we saw before. Type checking. 3.5.2. Um, so if we're running 3.5.1, we don't have access to type checking. Fortunately, there's an easy way to get around that, and this is implemented in most of the type checkers. Uh, so instead of using type checking, you will just use if false which is the same as the if type checking. And MyPy will know to follow this if false branch, which is a little bit fiddly to me, but it, it does work. So you can see here that it shells out to echo and uh, runs high here. So this is, this is how you would do it if you don't have access to type checking. Though nowadays 3.5 is, I think it's end of life, right? <laughs> 3.6 is this, the next one to die. Um, I only write code for Python 3.6.1 and above. And this is, again, specifically due to some of the uh, shortcomings of the typing module in 3.6.0, for example. Uh, but yeah, this is how you do it if you don't have access to type checking, which probably won't be relevant for <laughs> anyone who's writing typing code. Okay, so that's the second reason for using type checking. The first one was cycles. The second one is version-specific uh, typing code. And the third one is a broad category that I'm gonna call hacks. 
Um, I'm going to give you one example of a hack in, in that uses type checking, and that is for protocol. Um, there are other reasons you would use this as well. So, for instance, uh, some types are only generic at typing time and not at runtime, so you would have a, a specific type checking hack to make them generic at runtime, or make them generic at typing time, but not at runtime. Uh, but I'm going to show you a quick example using uh, protocol. And this comes from, I mean, a lot of my code does this. Um, so from typing import type checking. And again, protocol is one of those things that's only available in Python 3.8 and above. So you can trick the type checker to use it in older versions though. And the way that I usually do that is do if type checking, then from typing import protocol. Otherwise, so you can write an else block to your type checking block and the type checker knows how to do that. Um, and so this block will happen at runtime. This will happen at typing time. You can just say protocol equals object, which <laughs> will make your class that extends from protocol my protocol. Uh, it'll make it just extend from object instead of uh, an actual runtime typing class, which is a no op in Python 3. So then you might have, I don't know, maybe this is an indexable uh, index, or I guess it'd be get item. Uh, It's int int. Uh, so then if we add a concrete version of this class that had get item self x int return x squared. Yeah. And then we had a function which only took um, uh, indexable that took my protocol uh, and just did print. Hello, hello, indexable hold nine, for example. And then a main function. Uh, get our little boilerplate in there. And you'll see that this, uh, this runs. Oh, that actually did, oh, this is not squared, this is, power <laughs> and there, there that's great I was like that number is way bigger than I expect and if we type check this with my pie uh, my pie oh I ran that in three this I ran this in three eight um, I can show you it in three six which is older than protocol exists and if we run my pie on this should be happy yeah so my pie my pie understands type checking uh, but that's kind of the third category, which is like generic <laughs> wide bucket for hacks. But anyway, hopefully this was interesting. If you have additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.